Today we're going to go over 8.1, which is similar triangle theorems. Question is, why would it be useful to know if triangles are similar? The first thing we need to go over is the difference between congruent and similar triangles. So first of all, congruent has a congruent symbol and similar also has a similar symbol and it's just little squiggly line by it. So here's an example of a congruent of two sets of, uh, well, of a set of congruent triangles and also a set of similar triangles. Exam examples, the first set are congruent and then the second set are similar. Um, you can kind of see visually the difference, um, but the first thing that we need to look at are the angles and they'll be the same for both congruent and similar. Um, the corresponding angles will be congruent for both of them. And here's a list of all the congruent angles. So that's the angles, they are congruent for both sets, but here's where they get different. Um, on congru congruent triangles, you also have congruent corresponding sides, so that looks like this. But for similar triangles, your sides are no longer congruent, because if you look, the car triangle is smaller than the bus triangle. So your sides are actually proportional, they are not congruent. So the list looks like this. So this is what it's going to look like whenever you're looking at your triangle. So my CA of my smaller triangle is proportional to BU. So they'll make some kind of fraction or maybe it's doubled. Uh, the bus triangle is doubled the car triangle or maybe it's um, the car triangle is a third of the bus triangle, but it'll all be the same. Whatever that scale factor is, they will all be the same. So um, your AR over your US um, would give you the exact same fraction and then your CR over your BS will give you the exact same fraction. And I'll show you what that is on examples below um, as soon as we go over the different triangle similarity theorems. The first theorem we're going to talk about is the same as a um, congruent triangle. Well, the name is the same, but the way that you prove it is different. So first we're going to talk about side, side, side similarity. And here's an example problem. So this is an example for side-side-side similarity. The very first thing you would want to do is recognize your theorem. So if these were together, you would want to draw them separately and then look at the information you're given. You're given a side, a side, and another side. So it is obviously going to be side-side-side. The next thing that you want to do is to put the side lengths in order from small, medium, and large. So to do that, we're going to look for the smallest side of both triangles. On this one, it's 6. The smallest side on this one is 2. Then we need to find the medium side of both triangles. On this one, it's 9. And on this one, it's 3. And then the largest side for both triangles is 12 and 4. So those are my corresponding sides. Um, the next thing we need to do is to set up our proportions and check the sides. So what that means is we need to set each color over each other and make sure that they all reduce to give us the same number. So does um, 9, well let's do 6 divided by 2, does that give us the same thing as 9 divided by 3 and does that give us the same thing as 12 divided by 4? So 6 divided by 2 is 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3, and 12 divided by 4 is 3. So since they all do give me the same thing, then they are definitely side, side, side similarity. They must check. If for any reason any one of these is not the same number, then they cannot be similar by side, side, side. They just won't be similar. Um, then on your test, you're going to have to write the triangle congruent statement. So your first triangle you set up however you want. I'm going to name it um, M N O. Write our second one, we need to write it in the corresponding just like we did with congruent triangles. So M is between blue and yellow. Between blue and yellow for my smaller one is T. N is between yellow and green. Between yellow and green is E. And then O is between blue and green, and between blue and green is U. 
and now we can set up our sides. Um, this is our proof part of your test. And since it's side, 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 we have to list our three corresponding proportional sides. So um, NO is proportional to UE. Oh, EU, sorry, it's actually backwards. NO goes between, um, N goes to O on the second half of this triangle right here, so it has to be EU in the same order. Um, then our next one, MN, is proportional to, and MN is our first two letters, is proportional to TE. And then lastly is our blue side, which is MO, is proportional to, and then MO is proportional to TU. Um, and whenever you're writing these sides as proportions, you don't actually have to write the segment thing at the top of them. So like this line right there, that doesn't have to be there whenever you write the proportions. So that is a new improvement and a good thing. So on your test, you would have that it is um, similarity, that it's similar by side, 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 and then this is the rest of your answer. And we're gonna go over two more theorems on the back. So now we're gonna go over side angle side similarity. Side angle side similarity is a lot like the congruent, um, whereas it is side angle side, but the sides have to be proportional, not congruent. And the angle does have to be congruent, just like in congruent triangles. So the sides are proportions for similarity. They are not congruent. And here's an example. So here's an example problem that could be side angle side. And the first thing you always want to do is if the triangles are together is you draw them separately. On the second triangle, whenever you draw it, this top angle is still 24 because it's the big triangle by itself, but the left side is 15 plus five, which is 20, and the right side is seven plus 21, which is 28. So make sure that you look at that, um, that the individual sides you add together to make your bigger triangle. So now that we have redrawn them, the first thing you want to do is to recognize your theorem. Um, but in, I mean, we'll redraw them. And so you're given a side, you're given an angle, and you're given a side. So it's side, angle, side. The next thing you want to do is to check to make sure that both of your angles are congruent, because they have to be. So in this case, we want to make sure that since this is 24, that that's 24 and that's 24. So yes, that does check out. The third thing we want to do is to put your side lengths in order. So my smallest side on the top one is five, on the bottom one is 20. My largest side for the small one is seven, and for the big one is 28. And then you wanna set up your proportions and make sure that they actually work for your sides. So set up our proportions, let's do 20 over five. And does that equal to 28 over seven? 20 divided by five is four. 28 divided by seven is four. They both work out, so it is side angle side. Now let's write our triangle similarity statement. Um, I'm gonna do the big one first, so triangle WED is similar to, um, my W is between my no side and my yellow, so between no side and yellow is T. My E is where my angle is, and on my little one, E is where my angle is. And then my U, I'm sorry, my D is between blue and no side. So over here between blue and no side is U. Now we need to write our proof part. So one of the sides, you just pick one. Um, WE is proportional to TE. Then we have to choose the angle that angles that are congruent, so WED is the big one that is congruent to, yes, they're similar, but your angles are congruent to angle, it's congruent to angle TEU. And then our last proportional side is ED, 
is proportional to EU. And there is one more theorem that we have to go over, and it is angle-angle. Angle-angle, you just have to prove that two angles are congruent, because if two angles are congruent, the third angle is also going to be congruent, since they have to equal 180. So here is an example of angle-angle similarity. So the first thing we want to do is to recognize our theorem. So on this one, you are given the 90 degree angle there and a 90 degree angle there. But the other two angles you're given are 60 and 30, and those don't match. But we need to figure out what this missing angle is so that we can see if any of them match. So to find this top angle, that's 180 minus 60, which leaves us with 30 degrees. And I'm going to do this in another color, so hold on. So 30 degrees. So it's a 30, 60, 90. So if this is 30 and 90, this one would probably be 60 as well. So they are congruent. My other angle, given that is congruent, you could either do your 30s or you could do your 60s. Um, and on your practice, whenever I give you the answers, it'll include all three of them. You don't have to list all three on your test since the similarity statement is only angle, angle. You only have to list two. Um, but I list all three because I'm not sure which one you're going to choose. So the second thing you want to check for is to make sure that all the angles are congruent, which we have already done. Um, then we need to write our triangle similarity statement. So if I want to call my first triangle FRI, F is my yellow angle, S is my yellow angle for my second one, R is my green angle, A is my green angle for my second one, and I is my blue angle, so T is my blue angle for my second one. And then our proof would just, on your test you only have to list two angles, but on here I'm going to list all three just to make sure we have all three. So angle RFI is congruent to, because angles are congruent, um, AST. Yep, and then angle FRI is congruent to angle SAT. And then angle FIR is congruent to angle STA. And that's the end of our notes. Make sure you go to the bottom and write your summary.